Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us. First and foremost, SPAN, the STAR Project, as well as the Department of Education, would like to wish each of you and your families good health. My name is Monique Dujay, and I am the New Jersey Peer System of Support Project Coordinator and a parent group specialist with the START Engaging Parents of Students with Disabilities Project. I'd like to welcome you to today's webinar, Early Reading Interventions Utilizing New Jersey's Tiered System of Support, Closing the Gap. So now let's talk a little bit about SPAN. Debbie? Thanks, Michelle. Since 1987, families in New Jersey and beyond have made SPAN their first stop for support and resources. Today, SPAN's projects and programs for parents of children from birth to age 26 and for women of childbearing age have expanded from a kitchen table to over 20 national, regional, and local programs funded by government agencies, state, federal, and local, foundations, and fee-for-service contracts. These programs cover education, health and mental health, human services, child care, and child welfare. Our mission is to empower and support families and inform and involve professionals interested in the healthy development and education of children and youth. Our foremost commitment is to children and families with the greatest need due to disability or special health, mental health needs, poverty, discrimination based on race, ethnicity, gender, language, immigrant or homeless status, involvement in the child welfare or juvenile justice systems, geographic location or other special circumstances. In order to achieve our mission, SPAN's core programs help families, professionals, and policymakers to know the rights of families and their children, to access resources and information, to secure appropriate services, to navigate the systems that serve children and families, to keep children healthy and in school, to prepare for life after high school, to connect with other parents who understand, to be catalysts to improve services for children and families, to start and run parent groups, to become effective partners in, in improving schools, and to advocate for other children and families. Please visit our website for additional information, spanadvocacy.org. Tatiana. Thank you, Debbie. Good afternoon. It is my great pleasure to introduce to you the START Engaging Parents of Students with Disabilities Project, or simply START EPSD. Our project is the partnership between the New Jersey Department of Education, Office of Special Education Programs, and SPAN Parent Advocacy Network. And we offer programs and services that support the engagement of families to improve outcomes for students including developing and sustaining special education, parent advisory, and support groups in communities and school districts. Through workshops, regional meetings, and parent leadership development activities, we help parents and parent leaders to become informed and active participant in their child's education. Partner with educators in improving educational programs for students with disabilities, particularly in the area of inclusion. Start and strengthen special education parent advisory groups, CPACs, or parent support groups. And finally, increase effective family engagement to improve special education programs, policy, and practices in school districts and communities. Please meet our team. All seven of us serve as parent group specialists. In addition, Debbie Esposito and I, Tatiana DeGrosa, co direct in the project. Debbie is also our literacy project coordinator, and you will hear from her later. Monique DJ Wilson is NJTSS project coordinator, and Brenda Figueroa is the inclusion project coordinator on the project. To connect with our team, please visit our webpage, and the link to our webpage I will add to the questions box in, the, in, the, in just a few seconds. Um, I would like to introduce to you our um, presenter for today's webinar, Dr. Jessica Hammond. She's an NJTSS state level coach with the New Jersey Department of Education, Division of Student Services at the Office of Student Support Services. 
Dr. Hammond will share information about the state's New Jersey TS system of support's early reading initiative and its rollout within some of the New Jersey school districts. Today's presentation will give an overview of NJTSS uh, as a framework for academic and behavioral interventions and supports based on three-tiered model of response to intervention and multi-tiered system of supports. We will also explore an example of how this tiered system of supports may look like in reading and what supports are provided to all readers, as well as what additional supports provided to struggling readers and students with disabilities. And finally, we will have a wealth of resources that we'll also share with you at the end of this webinar. Bonnie? Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining the webinar today. Um, so now you've met us. Now it is time for us to meet you. And we have three short poll questions that will help us to get to know you. And that first question is, how are you attending today? Are you here as a parent or guardian, general education teacher, special education teacher, school district or staff, a school, school or district staff or other? I'll give you a few moments to answer the polls. I see that most of you have answered. Okay, I'm giving you a few seconds and I will close the poll and share your answers. Okay, so let's review your responses. So about 35% of you said that you are parents or guardian, 23% general education teachers, 4% special education teacher, 27% school or district staff, and 12% others. Here are our next questions. Is how old are your children or the children that you work with? And please check all the responses that apply. Preschool, grades K to 2, 3 to 5, 6 to 8, or grades 9 and above. I see that you all have responded. Okay, I will close the poll and share your responses. Okay, so 23% of you have children or work with children that, that are in preschool, 58% grades K to 2, 42% 3 to 5, 23% 6 to 8, and 27% ninth grade or beyond. And our last poll question that we have for you today is, which of the following are you familiar with? And please also check all the responses that apply. Intervention and referral services, INRS, universal screening, response to intervention, RTI, multi-tier systems of support, MTSS, or New Jersey tier systems of support, NJTSS. I see some of you are still responding. I'll give you a few more moments. Okay, I'll be closing the poll now. And let's share your responses. So 77% of you said that you are familiar with interventions and referral services, 41% with universal screening, 45% with response to intervention, 32% the multi-tier systems of support, and 32% said that you are familiar with the multi, New Jersey multi-tier systems of support. Thank you so much for re your responses. And we will talk about some of this today, and this will help us determine and shape our future webinars and workshops. And today we are going to begin by talking about RTI or response to intervention. Debbie? Thank you, Fani. So every district in New Jersey is required to have core programs, that is the set of common courses required for everyone, and some system of intervention and referral services, INRS, in place. Schools have some free freedom in choosing a framework that will perform the INRS functions. One of those is RTI, or response to intervention, which your school may be using as its INRS model or as a separate intervention. Response to intervention may sound complicated, but it's based on a fairly simple idea. Early in the year, your child's school can start looking at everyone's skills in reading and math. The goal is for schools to identify struggling 
learners early on in order to address challenges before they become significant barriers to learning and the student is discouraged or falls behind and then to give each student the support he or she needs to be successful in school. A big part of the RTI process involves closely monitoring student progress. That way, the school can see which kids need more academic support. Response to intervention is an early detection and prevention approach that addresses each student's individual needs. Remember, when we think of RTI, we also think of reinforcing the individual. Universal screening is a critical first step in identifying students who are at risk for experiencing learning difficulties and who might need more instruction. It's a way of targeting students who struggle to learn. Universal screening is typically conducted three times per school year, in the fall, winter, and spring. All students are screened in one or more of the academic areas, reading or math. The screening consists of brief assessments focused on specific skills that can accurately predict future academic outcomes. For example, in reading, that might include skills such as phonological awareness or decoding. Universal screening assessments are typically brief, conducted with all students at a grade level and followed by additional testing or short-term progress monitoring to assess students' risk status. All students are screened, and those identified as at risk for learning difficulties may be provided evidence-based interventions or targeted teaching in the identified risk area. Remember, screening is just the start. Progress monitoring ensures that students continue to receive interventions according to their developing needs in order to help these struggling students catch up. Monique? Thank you, Debbie. Building upon intervention and referral services and response to intervention models, New Jersey has developed its own multi-tiered framework of supports. New Jersey tiered systems of supports builds upon intervention and referral services and can build on or enhance what districts have already have in place. It gives schools a structure to meet the academic, behavioral, enrichment, and social emotional needs of all students. New Jersey tiered system of support is a multi-tiered system of support or framework of academic and behavioral supports and interventions to improve student achievement. So let's take a look and review a basic outline of New Jersey tiered system of supports. The tiered framework was developed in collaboration with New Jersey stakeholders that included educators and administrators from districts that were or have been implementing successful response to intervention and multi-tiered systems of response models, higher education experts, and parents. This framework is also based on successful RTI or MTSS models from across the entire country. New Jersey tiered system of supports gives districts a systemic way or a district-wide way to address all the different ways in which all students learn and engage all students in learning the New Jersey student learning standards. The framework provides a blueprint to maximize available resources to improve the support for all classroom teachers, and it targets interventions based on the needs. Through regular monitoring of the student's progress, database decision making, and a continuum of supports based on the student's performance, New Jersey tiered system of supports offers a variety of evidence-based practices designed to improve achievement and promote positive student outcomes. New Jersey tiered systems of supports is beneficial to all. So now we're gonna take a look and break down the tiers that incorporate the framework. And you all can see the triangle and the tiers are reflected in the different colors of blue. Tier one, which is the darkest color of blue and takes up the majority of the triangle at the bottom, is tier one represents high quality core instruction that is provided to all students 
It's designed and delivered with fidelity or with faithfulness and belief by highly trained teachers. In tier one, students are screened more than once a year in literacy and math to determine those who are on track. That's that universal screening. Those who need additional support and those who may require enrichment activities. Enrichment activities, for example, like um, gifted and talented. Problem solving teams made up of various stakeholders make decisions based on data and monitor the progress of the students, the progress monitoring that takes place periodically. Teachers are also provided with strategies and supports to meet the needs of their students. School-wide behavioral expectations are established and taught. And research supports that in an effective system, 80% of the students will have their needs met in that tier one. Tier two in it is in addition to tier one, not in lieu of. Tier two is in addition to tier one, not in lieu of. Supplemental supports and interventions that may be delivered in small group instruction or can be delivered during an additional period. Interventions are increased in intensity, frequency, and duration based on the review of the data and the progress is monitored regularly. So it should be noted that a student that's receiving supports in tier two, uh, it's usually approximately about 15% of your students that are receiving these supports. And a student may be referred to special education at any time if a disability is suspected. However, referral or determination that a student has a disability does not mean that a student must receive, must receive instruction in another environment. They can continue to receive instruction in that very environment that they are in. Tier three, which is at the very top and has, is the lightest color of blue and has the smallage, smallest uh, amount of space. Tier three is not special education. Tier three is in addition to tier one and tier two. In tier three, supports are intensive and individualized. There is an increase in the intensity and the frequency and the duration and the progress monitoring is even more frequently. I'd like to note that students are not tier one, tier two, or two, tier three students. They may receive tier two or tier three supports in one contact area or skill, but not another, and may move in and out of interventions throughout the year. There should be data rules that govern how students enter and exit a tier and accommodations for students with disabilities and students who are English language learners are provided to students who need them in order to access the supports at each tier. So the three tiers of supports and interventions are bolstered by effective school and district leadership. And that's that outline, that's what you see encompassing the entire triangle, that rust color um, around all of the blue areas of the tiers. Um, so as I was saying, the three tiers of supports and interventions are bolstered by effective school and district leadership, committed to the implementation of the system, committed to a positive school culture and climate, that is conducive for learning and committed to family and community engagement in the development and the implementation of the framework and in student learning and achievement. You see, family engagement is a critical element that enriches and improves a student's ability to apply the knowledge and skills gained in a classroom across all areas of life personal, academic, behavioral, health, and social emotional needs of all students. So to learn more about New Jersey tiered system of support, 
go to our website. And um, we also, if you look in our handouts, we have provided a one pager overview that will break this down for you um, in our handout section, both in English and Spanish. Stephanie? Thank you so much, Monique, for that great information. So now let's look more closely at the benefits of NJTSS. NJTSS enhances the capacity of the classroom teacher to address learner variability. It improves academic performance. It increases the placement of students with disabilities in the least restrictive environment. It may reduce disproportionality in special education. This refers to the imbalance of minority students identified with a learning disability. NJTSS may reduce suspensions, improve positive post-school outcomes, and presents both proactive and reactive strategies to prevent chronic absenteeism and intervenes when a student is at risk of being chronically absent. Perhaps the most important benefit, the New Jersey Tiered Systems of Supports is a framework for supporting the learning needs of all students. It provides a framework for inclusive instruction and intervention that has the potential to improve outcomes after graduation for all children, including students with IEPs. For those interested in more information regarding the framework and purpose of NJTSS, Tatiana is uploading the link to the NJTSS section of the New Jersey Department of Education website in the chat box. Now it's time to answer some questions. Tatiana? Um, that, thank you, Stephanie. Um, I'm gonna let you um, have a little bit more time to um, submit new questions, but the first question that we received is from um, Nicole. Um, she shared earlier on the webinar that she's a kindergarten aid paraprofessional, and her question is, what is the difference between RTI and INRS? Thank you, so, so this is Debbie. Um, Nicole, thank you. That's a really good question, and that was one that um, confused me early on as well. So every school district is required to have an IRNRS service. That's intervention and refer referral services. That's required under the New Jersey um, Administrative Code. Response to intervention is a framework or a model that a lot of schools use to fulfill that function. So response to every school is not required to have response to intervention. But a lot of schools do use that to fulfill the INRS function. The INRS function is what is required. So I hope that clarifies a little bit. Some people use NJTSS to clarify to fulfill that function. You know, some people are some school districts are now using NJTSS to fulfill the INRS function. Um, a lot of schools use RTI to fulfill the INRS function, or they use these, these frameworks as separate interventions. But INRS is required, intervention and referral. I hope that clarified it or answered your question. Yes, it did. Um, we have another question, if uh, we could please. Um, oh, the question is, could you talk a little bit about universal screening? What is an example of one? Is it administrated for the entire class at one time? Um, it, the question comes from a reading specialist at kindergarten through a second grade school. So maybe yeah. Jessica could answer that? Yeah, I'm happy to. So universal screeners, examples of those would be Dibbles 8 or Dibbles Next. Um, Ames Web Pals. So basically, they are a very brief 10 minutes or less screener that is given, administered to every student at the grade level, regardless of whether or not they're receiving um, ELL services or if they're on an IEP. Everybody receives the universe or is administered the universal screener. It's given three times a year. Um, and it's a predictor of. Um, concerns that a student might be having. It also kind of take, allows us to take a look and determine, you know, bridge some of the gaps. We had a um, we had a teacher who, you know, the students were all identifying all of their sight words. So at first glance at the K level, everything looked fantastic. But once we did that screener, we were able to really understand that 
most of her students were reading sight words and they were not able to encode and decode the sounds and the, the phonemes. So after we were able to, after we screened the students, we were able to identify, actually it was a core issue. Everybody kind of had that concern. So then we went in and it really allowed us to it informed instruction and then it helped bridge that gap. Thank you, Jessica. Um, we have lots of questions coming in. Um, another one um, here, and I'm going to try to summarize some of them. So uh, one person is asking for clarification RTI, whether it is a formal or an informal assessment. Um, so RTI, yeah, RTI is not an assessment. Um, RTI falls underneath the, or within the MTSS umbrella. So it's kind of like MTSS is an umbrella and then under there is response to intervention and INRS. So RTI, it's not an assessment at all. It's kind of the, the how that we do this. So how are we responding to interventions? And a follow-up question, um, RTI, which grade is it for? or is that a specific grade level or a specific district? So response to intervention is, it's really pre-K to 12. So it's not for a specific grade level. Um, tiered system of support is applicable for pre-K to 12 um, as well. Terrific. And maybe one more question before we um, go on with the rest of the presentation. Um, are parents notified when their school district screen their children? Um, um, most, most districts are sending information out or sharing out that, you know, they are implementing a universal screener. We're in um, year three of our project. So most of our districts that are involved in the project or the grant are informing parents, letting them know that universal screener occurred and you know, your student performs very well, or we have some gaps that we need to bridge. Um, does that answer that question? I'm not sure. Yeah, that's I'd like to add, why, that's part of why we're doing this. Mm -hmm. uh, right. For those of you that are listening, is the fact that most parents are not aware that that is a process that takes place every year. A lot of the times, a lot of parents aren't aware that that has occurred unless their children need those additional supports or they have been told that when they are uh, in front of a child study team looking for eligibility. So that was one of the reasons why we thought it was really important um, for all of us as parents and families to understand that this process happens in the beginning of the year and a couple of times after. And Jessica, I'm just wondering if you could also clarify, is that what also determines those students that are in gifted and talented? the universal screening? No, the universal screener, um, it's a predictor of concerns that a student might have in early reading or if you're using a math screener in, early, in math. Um, so it does not determine gifted and talented. You would look at other measures. I just measures to because we have sometimes had parents ask that question. So thank you. Absolutely. Uh, and, if Go ahead. Good. I'm sorry, Jessica. Sorry. If parents have questions about what assessments students are being um, administered, they should be, districts should be disseminating um, the tests that are being administrated, a list of them. So if you have questions, definitely ask your child's teacher or your child's principal. Um, that should be readily available. I was going to just underscore that. That's actually what I was going to say is if you have questions, if you're not sure if a universal screening is being used or when it's being used, um, that's a good question for back to school night or parent teacher conferences. Ask your teacher, has has the universal screener been administered or does does, does your school administer a universal screener? When, which one do they use and when? And, and if they've already done it, what was your child's results? So these are all appropriate questions for you to ask your child's teacher or principal. And if Great. I can jump in real quick. The results of a universal screener are um, typically, they may or may not be um, shared out with parents. So it's, you know, typically if a student is doing fine, then you wouldn't necessarily, um, it wouldn't 
warrants, a, you know, a ton of information. It's basically just a, you know, it's a measurement for teachers to be able to kind of drive instruction and understand and pinpoint which students need some support and specific skills and how do we target those skills. Um, universal screeners, if your child is going to CST, um, you might use that as a measure, but that is not the measure or it is not an assessment that would be used in the at, to diagnose a student with anything, specifically in terms of special ed. I don't know if that makes sense, but diagnose, the universal screeners are used um, as a dyslexia screening as well. Mm, good to know. And though for those of you who are not familiar with the term CST, she means the child study team. Right. Thank you very much, everyone, for um, these tips, suggestions, and we are receiving. Um, we have received lots of positive comments, uh, thanking you for um, clarification. We have other questions that we will have an opportunity to ask our presenters later during the webinar. And next, I would like to um, just review real quick what we have learned so far. So response to intervention is an early detection and prevention approach. And universal screening is conducted to identify students who may be at risk for, for, for poor learning outcomes. And NJTSS or New Jersey TS System of Supports is an evidence-based framework for supporting the learning needs of all students, providing a foundation for strong district and school leadership, a positive school culture and climate, and family and community engagement to give the schools structure to meet this academic, behavioral, health, and social emotional needs for all students. Next, uh, Dr. Hammond will tell us more about how this framework may look like in early reading. Good afternoon. The NJTSS Early Reading Project is a partnership between the New Jersey Department of Education and Rutgers University, funded by the Office of Special Education Programs within the United States Department of Education. The goal of the grant project is to increase the skills and knowledge of school staff to begin using NJTSS by providing coaching to 30 school districts or 60 schools across New Jersey in the area of early reading. NJTSS ER state coaches provide a tier three level of support to participating districts in the area of early reading for grades K to three. The purpose is to provide professional development to increase the ability of NJTSS implementation at the school and district level to improve reading skills for students with disabilities and or those requiring intervention. The grant focuses on core instruction, differentiation of instruction, database decision-making, and progress monitoring at the student and classroom level. Research tells us that literacy is important. Literacy is one of the most important indicators of a child's success, not only as a student, but as a communicator, a citizen, and a professional. Beyond just reading fluency and comprehension, being literate means being an effective communicator, a discerning and critical consumer of information, and a capable problem solver. There is overwhelming evidence that a child's early literacy education is critical to his or her academic success. Recent assessment results demonstrate that only about half of all New Jersey students and about a third of economically disadvantaged students in grades three to eight met or exceeded grade level expectations on 2015-16 statewide English language arts assessments. The New Jersey Department of Education has made it a priority to begin implementing the tiered system of support in order to improve reading achievement and to better identify those students with or without disabilities who are struggling. Within a multi-tiered system of reading supports, NJTSS Early Reading Project is able to provide reading interventions early on to those students who otherwise might not receive help until grade two or three after they have officially been diagnosed with a learning disability or have fallen far behind their peers. The hope is that through the implementation of the tiered system of support for all students in grades K to three, 
and by offering the opportunity for school staff to receive intensive coaching on the implementation of the New Jersey tiered system of supports and reading strategies universally at tier one in small group at tier two in intensive integrated reading interventions at tier three. Along with ongoing progress monitoring, student outcomes will begin to change closing that gap early and creating a pathway to future success. With considerable input from stakeholders in review of research in RTI MTSS models in place across the country, we identified nine essential components of NJTSS. Three of these, positive school culture and climate, district and school leadership, and family and community engagement are the foundational components of NJTSS and are typically necessary for the success of MTSS models. They also create an optimal environment for assessment, instruction, and planning processes to occur. NJTSS ER is fortunate to partner with SPAN in relation to our family engagement practices. Debbie? Thank you. Thank you, Jessica. SPAN's partnership with the NJTSS ER grant is allowing us to go into schools along with the state coaches and work with, the, with school teams made, made up of school leaders, teachers, specialists, and of course, parents to identify ways to increase parent engagement around student achievement in the area of early reading. We begin by identifying current family engagement efforts by meeting with these stakeholder teams and using a tool called the Family and Community Engagement Inventory Tool. This inventory was created by the SPAN team in collaboration with the Department of Education and with, the, with input from the state coaches. It's designed to facilitate conversation among the relevant school community stakeholders, parents, school, cats, school, school staff, and community members to identify areas of strengths. That is where families can be effective school partners and supporters of student achievement. Using the inventory also allows us to identify those areas where family engagement may need some enhancement or improvement. Once we identify these areas of strength and needed enhancement, um, we're then able to work with the school teams to create an action plan by identifying priorities um, so that family engagement goes from being an add-on or an afterthought to being more intentional and an effective way of partnering with families to support student achievement. At the moment, we're working with 11 districts throughout the state. Each of them is in a different part of the process. One of the first districts that we were able to work with was River Edge in Bergen County. Jessica was the state coach and Stephanie was the family engagement specialist. They're gonna describe their experience and talk about the importance of family school partnerships in NJTSS. Ladies. Thanks so much, Debbie. River Edge was a district that participated in the family engagement portion of the grant last spring to review their current practices and identify ways to increase engagement around literacy for young learners. They were successful in their actions because of support from district educators and administration. They had a willingness to accept feedback and a willingness to involve families and community members. We met as a group to go through an inventory and identify what was working and what were some of the barriers. What we found were the success, again, was we had invested educators and families, we had administrative supports. Through, through the tool, what we did find were some of the barriers were, um, um, there were some language barriers and also parents were feeling uninformed. We took the feedback from the meeting and created action items. Some of the action items were implemented immediately last spring and others were implemented this current school year. So some of the things that were implemented, um, we, the district was able to streamline communications across grade levels and schools. They were able to acquire translation to support non-English speaking families. They optimized the PTA to share information via social media and they had a plan and they planned a field trip um, for the first graders to the town library. If you look at the next slide, you'll see some additional things they did um, on their website. 
they created, um, they updated their user policy, their student code of conduct, as well as the registration in different languages, in English, Spanish, and Korean. Again, taking into consideration that that was one of the barriers that the parents identified when they did the assessment tool. Next slide. Additionally, they conducted, um, again, in terms of trying to increase their family engagement around literacy, they did a, a reading workshop. Students in kindergarten and grades one um, were, were learning the routines of, um, through a reading workshop. The model included a mini lesson, independent practice, small group instruction, and closing and sharing time. Students sat on the carpet for a short lesson while the teacher modeled a strategy or a skill to help everyone become better readers. The students met back at the carpet to review mini lessons and shared about their reading for the day. On the next slide, you'll also see additional thing, um, information that was posted on the district website. The superintendent, she talked a little bit about the, the grant itself and how um, River Edge was a proud recipient of the three-year grant and some of, the, some of the things that they did um, in terms of improving um, family engagement around literacy. They also talked about it at Back to School Night in September. Um, about the, the, that the district received intensive support from the state through coaching and high quality professional development to enhance differenti differentiation in the classroom. And all work for this project was aligned upon um, the screenings and assessments and intervention systems that were used in the school. And now Jessica is gonna talk about another event that they did in River Edge. Jessica? On February 25th, River Edge presented a parent academy that focused on the district's intervention block called What I Need or Win. The Win block in River Edge supports students in both reading and math, and this academy gave parents an opportunity to see interventions in ELA and math and at multiple grade levels. The district provided families with numerous opportunities to ask questions, this information is available on their website. Due to the current climate, DOE is working in conjunction with school districts and NJTSS coaches to support the new area of virtual learning and information is forthcoming. There are handouts available for the webinar and they are attached. They are growing readers, parents tips for raising strong readers and writers in both English and Spanish, and additional resources will be added to our NJTSS webpage in the early reading section. Thank you, Tatiana. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jessica. So I'm reading through a few um, comments that you've shared uh, earlier. Wendy was asking um, about the role of educational assistants or paraprofessionals. How are they involved in the implementation of RTI or are they involved in the IEP meetings and what kind of information they could provide since they work with students um, very closely? So the ways the ways that um, paraprofessionals are incorporated in the mm -hmm. educational system really varies from district to district and school to school in some cases. So, you know, I'm a huge proponent of all hands on deck. Um, so it it all depends on really what the the climate culture of the the school and district is. But it you know I love to see paraprofessionals in there and working with students um, and you know not making photocopies or anything like that, but to really be supporting students. Sure. And, and, if, and if this is a district that is looking at the specific framework around NJTSS and decides to implement or take some pieces out of that, it would be hopeful when we talk about families and community and district that mm -hmm. the power professionals would absolutely be part of that conversation from the beginning of the planning to the implementation and, of course, the uh, independent and individual support that they would offer the students that they work with. Absolutely. Thank you. And uh, so there is a lot of like overlapping comments uh, between the RTI or NJTSS and special education. Um, one parent here is asking, um, are any of the supports and intervention provided through uh, New Jersey tier system of supports um, supposed to be documented in the IEP? We do not document them in the IEP. The um, intervention supports is really, um, it's really a, a gen ed framework, mm -hmm. general education. Um, but 
that being said, so there was a little confusion um, at the onset of our grant project that sp students receiving special ed services would receive tier three support. And the tiers are really meant to be fluid, so, and then skill specific. So for example, if the universal screener is administered in late September, early October, school districts will take that data, they will look at it, will analyze it, will you know, dive deep, we'll create intervention groups based on specific skills that students need to work on. So it's very much skill specific and skill driven. Um, and this should not necessarily be documented in the IEP because it is very fluid and it is not, um, a student may receive intervention services. They might be in a tier one, a tier two group in, you know, for the first cycle in October, and then they might, you know, graduate out of that, they might go back into a group in January. So it's it's extremely fluid um, and it's based on skill acquisition and development and mastery. Thank you for this information. That's um, that's very helpful. Um, let's see. Another question um, here from a parent, what is New Jersey Department of Education as a whole doing about bringing more awareness to dyslexia in schools? Um, okay. Well, we, we do have a webinar that will be um, posted on our website, hopefully in the next couple months that will really, you know, support professional development and learning around dyslexia. And we do have the dyslexia law as well. Terrific. I will add the uh, links to the uh, dyslexia, perhaps dyslexia handbook and some of the other resources that are already posted on the New Jersey Department of Education, including professional development resources and information for parents um, shortly in the question box. Thank you, everyone. And next, I would like to um, review a little bit uh, what we have learned in the second portion of the webinar before we move forward. Um, so we learned that given the need to improve reading achievement and for New Jersey to better identify and provide early reading interventions to students with disabilities and those struggling with reading, New Jersey Department of Education has prioritized the implementation of multi-tier system of reading supports through NJTSS Early Reading Project. And I've shared uh, with you the link to, uh, to learn more about this initiative and get involved. Uh, we learned that New Jersey Department of Education also recognizes the significant role of family engagement. And family engagement is one of the three essential components of NJTSS framework. And finally, New Jersey Tiered System of Supports Parent and Family Engagement Assessment Tool offers an opportunity to assess schools practices across five domains and initiates a roadmap to build and strengthen educators and families' ability to create the types, the very types of learning partnerships that will provide lifelong benefits to all students. Next, Brenda. Yes, thank you, Tatiana. So what can families do to help close the literacy gap? One thing we can do is learn more about the New Jersey tiered system of supports. Remember that the success of an effective tiered system of support structure is based on effective parents and school collaboration. Families can educate themselves through webinars and resources. There are many great resources available online. You can view webinars available through the New Jersey Department of Education and SPAN. Both websites offer information, resources, and strategies. In addition, we have been sharing some useful links during this webinar and have included handouts you can download. Once you educate yourself on the framework, you can implement simple strategies at home. Some strategies include asking your child about their school day, encouraging your child to read, finding a quiet place to study, and limiting TV and screen time. As New Jersey students are transitioned to a remote learning platform, these strategies should be adjusted. For example, we might find that we can't really limit screen time. However, we can find resources where we can maximize and effectively use screen time as a valuable learning tool. Parents can find teachable moments in day-to-day -day activities 
to encourage learning. Next, think about how you can collaborate with your school. You can get involved with your local PTA. You can join the special education parent advisory group, maybe join one of various curriculum groups and or parent climate committee. If you're an educator, think of ways in which you can engage parents, like getting their feedback, providing tools that support learning at home, and having a parent information and resource night that involves parents from conception to execution. In a few minutes, Debbie will be sharing some exciting literacy initiatives that everyone can be a part of. NJTSS provides a framework for inclusive instruction and intervention that has the potential to improve outcomes for all children. Remember, when families and schools work together, everyone wins. Monique. Thank you, Brenda. Now we're going to learn where to find some great resources uh, around New Jersey tiered systems of supports, early reading and literacy. We have a NJTSS resource collection and it's a collection of resources that are developed and reviewed by not only the SPAN START EPSD project, but in collaboration with the New Jersey Office of Special Education Programs. And you can find a resource collection <clears throat> on our START page on the SPAN website. I believe Tatiana will be putting that in the, quest, the links in the question panel. Uh, the collection consists of four parts. There's basic information, information around the NJTSS framework and those components that Jessica referred to, uh, practical strategies and tips for families and parents, and we will be adding shortly additional resources and materials around the new early reading resources. I will be adding the FACE or the Family and Community Engagement Inventory Tool. Some of you may want to take a look at that and review it and see where exactly you fit in or your district fills in or introduce it to your district. And also uh, a link to the Learning Resource Centers, which are also great tools, and Debbie will talk about that shortly. <clears throat> so what do these resources look like? Well, they're one-pagers, they're infographics, they're briefs, videos, fact sheets, training materials, links to websites and webinars in multi-languages, languages, and more. So be sure to visit our page of valuable information and resources. Debbie? Thanks, Monique. So Monique spoke a little bit about the Learning Resource Center. And so for you, those of you who are not familiar, the Learning Resource Center Network is a project of the New Jersey Department of Education Office of Special Education funded through IDEA Part B funds. The materials and resources at the LRC are provided to support the education of students with disabilities, helping them to succeed and to achieve in the least restrictive environment. The centers provide regional targeted professional development and technical assistance to educators and families, including families of students with disabilities. And on a personal note, I believe that the LRCs are one of New Jersey's best kept secrets for parents of preschool and school age children. Uh, my children are teenagers now, but when they were younger, I was, I, I was actually able to check out um, I, I took advantage often of the LRC taking uh, resources and tools. I remember actually being able to check out the entire Wilson reading system um, for my children's grade level and working with them at home. I mean, there's a membership fee um, to access materials, but it's only $2 a year. I mean, $2 a year. What else can you get for $2 a year? You know, unfortunately, the LRCs are closed right now due to virus concerns, but I would definitely recommend visiting them um you know when we're eight as soon as you're able um also i just wanted to elaborate on uh, under the heading of what families can do and what schools can do um the start, start project is interested in working with districts school districts to enhance their family engagement efforts in the area of early literacy um similar to what we're doing with NJTSSER schools, but you don't have to be one of the school NJ, NJTSSER grantees. Um, we'll be focusing on helping the districts to create a family literacy action plan 
designed to encourage all families to engage in fun and frequent reading at home and to support their, their, their learners. Um, so these plans that we'll create uh, will be focused on strategies that are appropriate for all families who children attend the schools, including both students who receive general education support and those identified for special education supports. You know, we will help them to be, they'll be flexible and adaptable to best support culturally, linguistically, and economically diverse families and learners of all ability levels. Um, generating also, you know, it's important to note that generating and executing these plans will help your district to address the family and community engagement essential component, you know, one of the components again of the New Jersey tiered system of supports model. So um, if you'd like to learn more about the START project um, initiative, please, you can reach out to me directly. I think Tatiana is putting my contact information in the, in the box. Um, and also, if you just like more resources, in addition to our handouts that we have here on the webinar, if you'd like to access the START uh, literacy section of the, of the START project um, page, um, you'll find, um, again, resources, family-friendly handouts that you can share with your families if, you're, if you are a, an educator. Or if you are a parent, you can access those handouts on your own. There are tips and um, for uh, activities that you can do at home with your children. There are, there's a link to our webinar. Uh, let's read together tips to make story time fun and frequent and so if you if you have other questions about literacy and under the start project start epsd project please feel free to contact me um debbie esposito um through my contact information thank you michelle so i see we have a minute or two left and before we close out tatiana are there any other questions in the question box that would like to address mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I see no questions. Um, I um, I've been getting a lot of ton of positive feedback from all of you. Thank you so much for sharing how useful this information is to you and how you will be implementing uh, some of these strategies and resources in your work um, in the classroom and now at home with your children. Um, we uh, we had a question um, asking if we will be including uh, the links to all of the resources that I have been sharing. Uh, with you throughout the presentation in the follow-up email and yes in a, in a few days uh, you should be <clears throat> you should receive a link to the recording of this webinar along with uh, all of the links um, we shared and additional resources as well as handouts so you will have um, them and please share with your colleagues with other parents and your district administrators Michelle? All right, great. Thanks so much, Tatiana. So I'd like to thank all of you for your time and your commitment to helping all children reach their fullest potential. At SPAN, we try to bring information and resources to families and professionals who are concerned about the achievement and the well-being of all children. So please take a minute and give us feedback on the evaluation that will automatically populate when you close out this, when we close out this webinar. We really use that information. We want to make sure that your voice is part of the resources, webinars, workshops, and parent advisory groups topics that we create. Remember, if you think of a question after this webinar, that's fine. Feel free to reach out to us by using the contact information on the slide. So this will conclude our webinar for today. Thank you so much for joining us and have a wonderful day, everyone.